Hey there, beautiful souls. Welcome back for today's message. Again, I've been away for a little while, um, but definitely very excited about uh, sharing today's message with you guys. And I have to admit, it has been really hard for me to not jump on a live with you guys. Uh, and the reason why I want to um, mention that is because it's very much in alignment with uh, with the with the topic for today, all right? So this message is really about uh, getting unstuck, recognizing your sabotaging behaviors. And I want to give you guys an analogy that has been so freaking helpful for me um, to stay the course in my own growth journey, um, exactly where it is right now. And to be honest, it's been stuck at for a, a long period of time and I've only just realized why that has been and realized how I've been creating my own suffering, my own frustrations, trying to move ahead, thinking I need to be where, somewhere else and, you know, shooting all over myself in the amazing words of Tony Robbins that you probably can relate to. And um, and basically understanding this process that I'm going to share with you guys today, uh, it is, I hope that it helps you as much as it's helping me to just stay the course, to be present to the moment, to honor my own individual journey. And that's what I want for you guys. And to recognize that when we are oblivious to the process that I'm going to be sharing with you guys today, um, Basically, we sabotage our success and we feel like we can never get ahead. We feel like we're saying we're going to do something, but it never really gets done or we change our mind. Um, we feel confused. It feels like there's two of us kind of in and inside of us kind of going to war with ourselves and never getting anywhere, right? Like when you go to war with yourself, no one wins, right? Like who's winning in that fight? And um, and basically, this is going to be uh, a, a message, I hope, that will help you to take a longer term perspective on your own growth journey, give you a tremendous amount of self-compassion, empathy, empowerment, and peace, really. Just a, a centered peacefulness to know that you're exactly where you need to be. It's just you need a shift in the mindset in terms of basically um, those that part of your mind that overthinks things, confuses things, and gets in the way. All right, so so excited to have all you guys here. As you are tuning in, please do drop me some comments. I can see Chet in the house and Bill. Always good to see you, my friend. Elliot's here. Good to see you and Simon from Mexico. Love having each and every one of you guys here. So. I want to hear from you guys. So as I'm diving into today's topic and sharing personally where I'm at and why you haven't seen as much as me of me recently and how I've been absolutely having to hold back from uh, my creation and um, and really direct that more inwards. Today's message is really going to help you to understand that. And I hope that you can find yourself in it as well. So. Today's message is get unstuck and stop self-sabotage by understanding the process of human psychological metamorphosis. All right, that sounds like a huge mouthful, but believe me, it is so simple and it is so profound. So let me dive into and give you this analogy and explain to you how this could be the missing link in your own growth journey, particularly for those of you out there who are more like the A types and you think you should be further along the timeline uh, than you are and you feel really self-critical and you're really in a, in a hastiness and you're trying to get to the next thing and you know you feel defeated because you you can't stay there or you change your mind and you feel like you're just treading water and really getting nowhere this is a message that I hope will really support you so I'm going to talk to you about a process that you've probably all um, heard of and thought about before and it's almost corny in the realms of personal development to talk about the transformation from the caterpillar to the butterfly but Bear, bear with me and listen to this again because 
I want to share a part of this um, process that I had actually not been aware of and makes all the difference when applied to our own transformation, um, albeit more of a psychological one in the human experience, but using the analogy of the butterfly's physiological metamorph metamorphosis or transformation from immature to adult, right? Or from form, one form to another. Let me explain it in a way that has just like blown me away in terms of how resonating it is and how much we can apply it to our own pathway and growth journey. So I didn't actually know that during the process, like when once a caterpillar, right, um, goes into, it creates its chrysalis, right? And um, I thought if you were to cut open that chrysalis, like partway through the caterpillar being in it, right, its cocoon or or chrysalis is the real technical term. Uh, a, a cocoon, I've learned, is actually um, a moth caterpillar. So a caterpillar to a moth uses a cocoon and um, a butterfly has a chrysalis, all right? So not to get all technical, but you know, if you wanna know that stuff. Basically, I thought if you were to cut open that chrysalis partway through the caterpillar's transformation to, to the butterfly, I believed you'd find something that was kind of half, half caterpillar, half butterfly, right? Kind of like a tadpole in its transformation into a frog, right? There's a part halfway through the journey, it's kind of half frog, half tadpole, right? But that is actually not the case. So let me let me um, explain to you that in that process, in that middle part where if you were to open the chrysalis, in the midway of the transformation from the caterpillar to the butterfly, what would actually happen would be that a liquid or a goo or just a complete um, liquid or soup of this you know, caterpillar would just kind of fall out, right? Just the liquid would just fall out of the chrysalis. And that was really interesting to me. And basically what happens in the process for the caterpillar is the caterpillar has these cells called imago cells, which basically, if you look at the word imago, you know, image, this ability to these cells that uh, allow it to know that it is meant to become something else, something different, right? And these imago cells are what direct the caterpillar to, you know, eat up, get really fat, and then actually create, shed its own skin in, in the way of creating this chrysalis. And inside the chrysalis, the caterpillar actually dissolves, right, into this goop, right? Completely unrecognizable from the caterpillar it once was. And from this goop, right, inside the chrysalis, Base, after it's fully dissolved, basically what happens is it reconstructs and reorganizes its cells and um, transforms into the butterfly and then, um, you know, ex exits the, um, the chrysalis in order to, for its next pathway of its journey, right? Now, when, if... If the, the butterfly gets to that point where it is ready to cut open the chrysalis and, you know, get out into the air, right, and into the sun, if you were to help that butterfly exit the chrysalis and cut it open for it, it would actually die, all right? And there is a direct correlation with the lifespan of the butterfly in terms of how much it struggles to cut open its own chrysalis and make its own way out. And when it emerges from the chrysalis, it doesn't automatically become this beautiful, you know, fully fledged butterfly. It actually emerges from that chrysalis in, with wet, crimpled little wings, very vulnerable and reliant then um, to expand itself and the sun to hit the veins in its wings and for its wings to expand and grow. And then it starts its next journey, right? Uh, towards that strength. So how do we look at that and knowing those little steps, right? How do we actually really apply that um, to not a physiological metamorphosis that the butterfly takes that makes that transformation from one thing to the next through the imago cells, right? Like having a vision, knowing that it is meant to become something else. And then 
going into the chrysalis, creating its own chrysalis. I'm just going to say cocoon, right? Its own little shell, right? And dissolving completely everything that it's ever known about its own self, knowing and trusting in the vision of becoming something more, right? And holding that space for itself to fully dissolve, reconstruct, reorganize, and then struggle itself to break free of its container, right? Its safety net to really give itself, you know, its its next leg at life, right? And to know that the struggle, the tremendous struggle of that butterfly cutting open its own chrysalis, right? With every bit of energy it's, it's got, that, that struggle is what ensures its strength and expands its lifespan, all right? And so look at how, you know, looking at us as a human being, I do believe that we have something similar to those Imago cells that the caterpillar holds, right? There is a reason why we have these transformations in life. There is a reason why we have this deeper calling within that always knows that we can become something more. We're meant to experience more. We're, ex we're meant to give more, um, love more, create more, you know, like just you know, live our highest self-actualized purpose, right? And and this is what kind of holds us up, right? If we do not create the safe container for our old identity to fully dissolve, and that feels absolutely terrifying because to be isolated, to be alone, to lose our sense of belonging that is connected to our old identity, that is like death itself. And when we can understand that it is absolutely necessary to dissolve, to die to our old identity so that we can allow those deeper, more intelligent parts of ourselves to reorder, reconstruct and create the thing or the person that we are truly meant to become, that we've all we've known all along with those Imago cells, right? Are letting us know that we absolutely have a bigger calling in this life, right? To trust in that, to be willing to dissolve and die to the old. Even if that means isolation, even if that means uh, that we lose everything that we've held certainty on, to actually then transform. And the biggest part of this for me was I didn't know that if you helped the butterfly uh, to struggle less, right? If you helped it cut out of its own chrysalis, that it would die. I didn't know that part either. And basically what um, has happened for me is I have been going from the caterpillar into the cocoon, but then, oh, this feels a bit lonely and, oh, I don't want to dissolve completely. Who am I, right? And not knowing that that's the process, right? And, um, and basically coming out too soon, trying to come out too soon, coupled with trying to um, help get other people to support me, to help me struggle less rather than the full responsibility for my own necessary isolation so that I can fully dissolve trusting and having faith in my vision for a better, more fulfilled, uh, more aligned, more true, uh, more full of integrity uh, woman that I know myself to be in that vision, right? And to not cut that short, right? Not sabotage my success by coming out too early uh, and not, um, you know, staying stuck and limited uh, because I'm trying to find somebody to cut open my own chrysalis so I don't have to struggle so hard is basically taking that full ownership on that and knowing and trusting that the reason why I have felt like I've been very stop, start, stop, start in um, in lots of areas in my life, you know, and feeling like, what is that? You know, why, why can't I move forward when I enlist different support uh, uh, um, from other people a lot of the time? And basically what I can see it as now is my essential self knowing 
that ain't nobody can do it for me, right? Nobody can cut that open for me. And my resistance to them doing so, even though I'm saying I want that, is actually um, my true knowingness, right? Calling it out and saying, you will die down that path. And the only way to attain the vision and actualize your potential in this, in this lifetime is to struggle yourself, to take 100% ownership of cutting your own chrysalis, to being vulnerable, right? To exiting damp and unsure and completely new and completely transformed and to trust in that process that if I tried to skip over the the dissolving in the isolation and the st tremendous struggle of cutting open the chrysalis and emerging very vulnerably, if I tried to shortcut that, which I have many, many times, um, basically I am sabotaging my own success. I will never close the gap between where I am and the vision I hold so strongly. And so the reason why I wanted to share this with you is because I believe that all of us are doing this. All of us when we are not fully emerged, right, on that journey of becoming that butterfly, and particularly for those of us who feel like we are spinning in a hamster wheel, right? We know this stuff. We should, we should be further along or we should be, you know, where we really say we want to be, but why does, you know, stuff get in the way? It's basically, I, I believe at this point, and I know this to be true for myself, is we are trying to fast track the, the actual process because we're very short-sighted. We don't know what we don't know. We don't know the process, but if we know the process, we can trust and have faith and relax into it and know that there is no skipping ahead, right? You can't just jump over from where you are today into the person you know for yourself that you can become, right? You have to dissolve. You have to reconstruct. You have to struggle and re-emerge. You have to be vulnerable. You have to take that responsibility for yourself and know that the more you struggle with faith, the stronger you will become as the person, the leader, the man, the woman, the higher self that you know with that calling and that vision you are destined to be. All right. And most of us, feel like we would rather stay belonging with our old identity than to f go through the isolation or loneliness, right? That it takes and the courage that it takes to dissolve and reemerge and not know where we belong in this cultured world, right? So we go to sleep even to the voice within that absolutely always knows when you're not living up to your potential, All right? So I know for those of you who would watch these messages, you are the kind of people just like me who refuse to remain um, asleep and you definitely desire to stay awake. And um, I've been going through a lot of transformation every single day, um, at the highest level I've ever been in, like, and it's just, it's almost too hard for me to catch up um, with being able to share with you guys. That's why I, I've been like, oh, I really want to do a live for you guys right now. Like, and it's happening like every single day. And I've had to put the pause on that because I'm still in the dissolving process. And the last thing that I want to do is jump back into a pattern uh, that could take me backwards, right? Could It could stunt that that dissolving process and therefore keep me longer in the chrysalis, right? That I've, I've already been doing that for so long. And so guaranteed, I know so much of what I want to share, I will be sharing with you guys, but every single day has been um, deeper and deeper revelations. And uh, it's so much that I, I know my journey right now is to keep that in the chrysalis, to share when I feel 
like okay like I, I can't hold on too much longer it, 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 I do want to share with you guys and then to come back into where I am and I'm going to start to re-emerge um, for greater and greater time from that um, but I just I'm just being very cautious not to fast track it and jump into my old habitual patterns of just do 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 and just create and show up every day no matter what and basically I have found that personally for me it has made me fall asleep to my connection with myself in some ways and so um, your journey might be very different it might be very similar as well um, so I just invite you to turn inwards and to know this process right of human psychological metamorphosis and to know and listen into that voice right like that relationship that you have with your inner voice is the most important right it is at the heart and the connection point of the leader that you're meant to be in this lifetime in whatever regard that is and i think that now more than ever I don't know if it's just that my eyes are only waking up to this fully right now, right? And my past self didn't have the capacity to hold more of the world's pain, right? Or if we are really like tenfold in to what's going on in the world, you know, but you know, what's going on in North Korea, you know, um, really woke me up. I want each and every one of you guys um, who wants to be inspired and um, grounded in this world that we're living in, I really invite you to um, to watch or listen to uh, Joe Rogan's um, interview with Yeon, uh, Ye Yeon Mi Park, Y-E-O-N-M-I Park, her name is. Um, she is a defector or an escapee from um, the crimes against humanity taking place currently in North Korea that I was really um, ignorant to, really ignorant to, and it woke me up. And, uh, and, and you know, obviously what's happening in Afghanistan right now, um, I mean, it can be really heartbreaking to look at what's going on in the world. Um, but to I've started really looking into different countries and really looking at the darker side because I realized that I've been fully asleep to the dark in our in our existence and I've been quite naive in my pursuit for the light and I've realized that in order for me to actualize my highest potential you know the vision that I have that calls for me I need to be a fully integrated person and that means that I've got to be able to look at the dark and the light and be wiser for the for the both of them. You know, not feeling defeated and helpless by the darkness in the world and not just blindly, you know, skipping through life just looking at the sun, right? <laughs> you know, like we, we need to see both sides and when you see both sides, you become more empowered and I feel like this is the missing link for most of us as leaders. First of all, we don't know the process of metamorphosis that is necessary for our growth and transformation into a higher part of who we are consistently through our lives. And secondly, we are asleep. You know, I speak to most of you guys who I connect with are incredibly heart-centered, incredibly loving human beings. And most of my coaching clients that I work with, it's so surprising to me that you struggle with so many of the same things that obviously I've struggled with and continue to do so in my next revolutions of this. But basically there are common themes of being very deeply heart-centered, very desiring to grow and to contribute and, you know, and to be loving and kind in the world. But so many of us have been missing our backbones, right? We've been missing the strength. We've been terrified of owning our own power and our own strength. And we've looked at power and strength and we've, we've looked at it as it's part of that authoritarian darkness that we want nothing to, to do with. But what we're missing out on is our, the, our own ownership of our own inner power, knowing that we could never be overridden by that darkness with the heart's centeredness that we already have such a strength with. But in order to be leaders of love in this world, you can't do it without your backbone. 
backbone. You can't do it without owning your own darkness. You can't do it without seeing and having the capacity to hold space for the world's darkness. We cannot be empowered leaders of love in this world without our backbone. And I think now more than ever, the world is calling for you to be an empowered individual. Not to just think you're going to spread and, and guide the world to lightness through love and kindness. You have to know your own darkness. You have to own your own power and you have to integrate it with that loving heart of yours. All right. And it's very it's a very scary world when we feel like we are just heart centered and we are looking at uh, those in our world who are very, very driven by the dark and kind of the opposite to us. Right. Like we're so in the love and so in the heart and missing the strength from our darkness and owning that. Right. And there are other individuals in this world who are the opposite, who are really in the darkness and they're missing the heart, right? They're not integrated either, but we can't be at these opposing extremes and think we're going to make a real difference in this world. We have to integrate the two. That is the process that I go through every damn day. And you know, the most difficult thing that I find is staying awake. We are so good, right? Our human psyche is so good at deceiving ourselves into comfort, into, oh, that's their problem. Oh, they're taking care of it. Oh, it's no problem. Oh, that thing that upset me the other day, I kind of remember it right now. What were, what were they talking about in North Korea, right? Like, you know, all that stuff. We are masters of self-deception and falling asleep. And basically, I'm in a battle each and every day to remain awake, all right. And I, I hope that you are too. And I hope that a message like this inspires you to stay awake, wake up and stay awake. All right. And know the process and know that we can't look to others to save the game. We can't look to others to cut open our, our chrysalis, right? Our cocoon, right? We can't look to mitigate our own struggle. You are only as strong as the struggle you endure. All right. And so if we really want to see a loving shift in the world, right? A global shift to heart-centeredness, right? To loving power, then we have to take that 100% ownership for cutting our own chrysalis, right? And before that, having the courage to dissolve our identity from what it has been, right? So that we can regain our power, integrate fully, and actually make a meaningful difference in this world. So, um, that's my rant for you guys today. So I definitely want to check in with you guys. So, um, I hope you've been dropping me some comments. If not, drop me some now, say hi, let me know where in the world you're tuning in from. And I absolutely want to hear from you about any, uh, wisdom that's come up, any questions you might have, any experiences that you'd love to share. I absolutely love connecting with you guys and I've missed it so, so much. And it's been so difficult to hold back from doing this, but I hope that what I've shared with you guys today has shed some light as to why you haven't seen me as much, um, as usual. All right. So let me check in. As I said, I've got Chet and Bill. Good to see you. And Elliot, it has been a long time. Always good to have you back. And Simon from Mexico. Good to see you as well. And Georgina. Hi, Vanessa. I hope you're doing well there in the lockdown. Yeah, it's always good to hear your daily tips. Georgina, so beautiful to have you here. Gorgeous. Um, and yes, I am in my sixth lockdown here in Melbourne. Uh, to be honest with you, we've got another two weeks definitely in complete lockdown, um, but uh, it's probably going to extend um, with the case numbers that are coming up. And you know what? This sixth lockdown in Melbourne that I've experienced, we've had over 200 days of hard lockdown now in Melbourne during the pandemic. And I had actually through this process reached this point where I'm like, okay, I've, I have freaking had enough, right? Like, to and just itching to get out into the world, right? And for those of you who followed me for a long time, you know, travel is like so high on my priority list, right? Exploring different cultures and being, you know, having the globe as my home, not just Melbourne, Australia, right? And, um, and then I had to see it, take a step back, right? And watch my you know, fear-driven self get into a whole thing. And God, we could talk for hours about so many different things that are coming up in our, in our authority and government systems right now, basically. Um, but 
I had to take a step back and realize the opportunity I'm being presented uh, to cocoon right now, to give myself this necessary time to dissolve because if we didn't have this going on right now, I mean, like I've got a partner who lives in the States, I would have probably been with him this whole time. You know, I would have gone back into old patterns that I have just owned more fully in my own life, right? I have many times throughout my life stunted my growth because I have wanted to jump over the isolation of the disillusion of self and I, I love relationships, right? And I love um, depth of connection. Depth of connection and intimate connection is my number one value, right? So it's really been difficult for me to stay in that cocoon, to create that for myself and dissolve and take that time because the distraction of jumping out into the world has been too much of a draw card for me, right? And so I can look at right now being in this lockdown and that part of me can get like, God, like, give me back my freedom, right? And the other part of me is like, this is exactly where you need to be. And this is working for you, right? There is no chance of your distractions. You must go through this disillusion process and you must stay with it because it's uncomfortable, all right? And so I'm seeing it as a bit of a gift and a bit of a support in terms of helping me to stay the chart of the course as well. So yeah, anyway, love that Georgina, always love seeing you, and Daryl from the Great White North, so good to see you my friend, and Jose, hello Vanessa, um, I have to confess I ha I've been a master of the procrastination, oh haven't we all, um, as a result of that, like you mentioned, metaphor, um, metamorphosis, uh, are brutal, brutal consequences as a result of that, yeah. Anyways, um, it's never too late to achieve the best transformation in our lives. Um, my modus vivendi, still a caterpillar, um, but that's why I'm so obsessed to get the advice of the best life mentors and I've met like you. Oh, that's so kind of you. Uh, thank you for your great work. Hugs from Indiana, USA, and hugs from Australia coming right back at you. And I love that, my friend. You know, most of us tend to believe ourselves to be further along than we are and just know that that's part of our uh, human protection mechanism. So I'm saying that because I really want to acknowledge Jose for saying he's still the caterpillar, right? And for me, I was thinking, oh, I'm the butterfly. Yeah, you know, and I'm like, no, the friggin' hell you're not, okay? You, you're still, you're still in that dis dis dissolving process, right? And you've been trying to, be the caterpillar who's already the butterfly and wonder why you can't fly, right? Wonder why you keep trying to jump off the leaves and you fall, you fall down flat on your face again, right? It's it's knowing and owning where we're actually at. And, um, and again, you know, I feel like this dissolving process is where I'm at and it's where I need to be. And I love that you're in the caterpillar, Jose, and you're on the journey. You know, this when you start really listening into yourself, time, you know, and that hastiness and I got to be there yesterday kind of mindset, it starts dissolving, right? That's one of the things that I'm noticing because time has been um, a real anxiety inducer for me. It's been something, my relationship with time has been something that I've really struggled with. And I'm finding through this process, I'm not there yet, but I'm finding through this process, um, my uh, anxiety, hastiness, like, you know, the, the parts that make me want to skip out of this and try and find a, a quicker route, right, um, that has been jeopardizing my potential, sabotaging my success and keeping me stuck, um, I fi I'm finding that that is also dissolving, which is really empowering. So love that, Jose. So good to have you. And I always love your contributions to these conversations. So thank you so much for being here. And uh, Jerry, you're back. Um, you've missed my lives. Well, I've missed having you here, my friend. And so good to see you. Hope you're doing amazingly well. And Patty's here as well. Good to see you, beautiful. And Jose. Uh, uh, another Jose. I love it. Um, hi, Vanessa. Um, it's very good to see you again. I really want and have been working on transforming myself, but the struggle I'm facing is I know what to do in some areas, but I just can't seem to get myself to do it. I get you. I feel you on that, Jose. Thank you so much for sharing that very relatable part of our human experience. And this is what I would say to you. 
This is part of it. What, what if, what if you're knowing what you need to do, right? That desire to transform are your Imago cells, right? If you didn't catch a, the start of this um, message, please do go back and hear me talk about what the hell that is. Um, but basically your vision for knowing and having that deep certainty that you know you're meant to become more than what you are right now in this world. What if, you know, that that's that you're, you're um, sabotaging your success, right? You know what you need to do, but you're not doing it is because you're focused on skipping over the necessary elements of dissolving the old identity, right? Going through the psychological metamorphosis, transformation, all right? Uh, that is part of every getting to the next stage, right? And and like me, you didn't realize you had to go through that dissolving process. You thought that you could just learn the steps and take the action and you'd be there, right? You'd be the butterfly, um, you know, happy and fulfilled in your vision of reality that you'd imagined. So what if that's the case? And what if you're being called to some deeper inner work in order to close the gap between where you are and where you want to be? I happen to believe that a lot of time our procrastination is either connected to the fact that we are, we don't, when we're skipping over the, the necessary inner work that we need to do, or quit, it's important also to question that vision and make sure that that vision is ours. It's not culturally um, adapted, right? It's not somebody else's expectations of us because a lot of time, look at your um, pro procrastination as basically your spirit alerting you to what you think you're supposed to be doing or um, how you're supposed to be doing it. It's not it, right? It is stopping you in your track so that you don't go down the wrong path. All right. So um, I'd invite you to go into some self-reflection with that. I would love to support you on that. So you can reach out. I can support you on that more personally. Um, and definitely let us know how you're going on that journey and know that you're not alone. If you're not currently part of the Limitless Potential, uh, inner circle community. There's a free Facebook group. Uh, I also have a monthly masterclass um, group and we are a small team who meet up every um, two weeks or every month, depending on what you um, are called to. Uh, but basically it's really good to support yourself with other people who are really committed to the process as well. All right. Sometimes it can feel so isolating and it doesn't have to. All right. So Hope that what I've shared there is of value and support to you, Jose. And thank you so much for showing up and sharing. And uh, Charles, um, can, uh, when are you going to give... Oh, okay. Uh, so we can talk face to face. Charles, probably not going to do any dates. That's not what I'm here for. Um, but um, I hope that you are finding value in these messages. And like I just men mentioned for Jose, if you do want to um, connect and get support from myself and the other people in our community, you are absolutely more than welcome. So you can reach out to me and I'll let you know the details for that or join the free Facebook group. Um, love to have you in there. And uh, Jose, I really love what you said to know your own darkness. Um, I will stay awake to know the process. Absolutely, Jose. What I've found in my own journey is that when we look at the darkness going on in the world, if we feel helpless, right? That is a sure sign that we are not actually owning our own, um, sorry, I didn't even realize that I had some YouTube thing playing in the background then until that came on. Uh, I was asleep to it, right? Um, but basically, when we can look at our relationship with the darkness going on in the world, I, I don't think I could have held the space for it. That's why I was more naive to the goings on and the darkness in the world, because my inner self was just trying to protect myself. I had, an, I had enough pain inside that was unresolved. I didn't have the capacity to take on the world's outside pain. And if I did get heat of it, like I was either asleep to it or I'd feel completely helpless by it. And the pathway to become empowered is absolutely you've got to heal yourself, right? You've got to uh, turn the compass inside and you've got to own where you have been wounded, right? And start to clear the past circumstances. And as you do so, your capacity to hold space for the world's pain grows, 
That's how I see it, right? And that's my experience. And then your relationship to it starts to change because by going inward and looking at the wounds, you're actually shining light on your own shadows. And then going through the processes of transform transforming past memories where you were a victim in some regard into a creator who can see your contributions to your own life circumstances, it gives you this new ability to shift perspectives and be empathetic to uh, to different people throughout your existence and your life, right? Not letting them off the hook with, with um, bad or even uh, abusive behavior, right? But like seeing different vantage points and uh, shifting from the victim to the creator, that is a process of owning your own darkness, owning how you impact others and owning how other people's uh, painful um, actions or behaviors, how you could see yourself engaging in them in some degree, or you might even be doing it and blind to it. By doing that, you actually become empowered, right? You, you are more integrated it's not just half of yourself in the light or, or uh, and, you know, turning your back on the dark and pretending it's not there, which makes you terrified of any darkness outside of yourself because you can't possibly turn your back on any more than you already are, right? Um, it's about turning towards that and owning it. And oh my gosh, like I can't share it all with you right now, but like I've been having some really big revelations um, in past relationships. Uh, all sorts of things are going on. And I'm, I'm completely dissolving old black and white mentality and, uh, and seeing, you know, seeing the dynamics in a whole new way. And it's so empowering. And it allows me to look at more of, take more in of the world's pain or those around me. And instead of feeling like so weighed down by it and helpless, I feel inspired. I feel moved to become an even stronger, more empowered individual so that I can actually have a hope to uh, make some sort of difference in my own life, in the lives of the people that I love and care about. And even on a bigger scale, um, should it should I become powerful, powerful enough to be able to do so, right? And that's what I want for all of us because as ourselves, we can't do it all alone. But if we all become those empowered leaders who can go through the tremendous struggle of transformation, the disillusionment, right? And, uh, and to awaken to our own realities, take that responsibility, do our own internal work and step forward with the actual capacity to take on a grander load of the pain of the world, not to be weighed down about it, but to actually do something about it, um, then that is what I believe we're all here to do. And that's the mission that I'm on, basically, is um, to help myself become the leader I know myself to be and help others on their own unique journeys to become the leader that they are. All right. And believe me, if there's anyone who's tried to skip over all the work you need to do uh, and try and find a fast tracked approach, it's, it's me, right? I'm the human guinea pig of all things personal development, trying to jump there as quickly as possible, right? And and from that journey, I've realized what the process is. I've articulated um, such a simple way of looking at it for you guys today. Uh, when we look at that human psychological metamorphosis, uh, I hope that that resonates with you. And my hope is that through knowing the process, you will relax into it and not try and skip over it because we know and realize that when we try and skip over it, we stay stuck and we sabotage our success. All right. So hope that resonates. Thank you, Jose and Elliot. I'm grateful that this is a great talk for you. Good to have you. And Bill, I sense you need sunshine. Um, you beat yourself too much and you're, you're soaring more than you know. I so appreciate all of those words, um, Bill. And yeah, like, um, you know, I, I'm finding that I, I've spent so much of my life searching for the sunshine, hanging out and basking in the sunshine that I'm actually going through a necessary part of waking up, waking up to the darkness, right? And allowing myself to explore my own darkness, right? Instead of 
just being one-sided, I'm allowing myself to explore the other side at a, at a deeper level without shame and, and guilt and um, judgment, but I'm still on that journey, right? And um, some days I can feel into it and other days like yesterday, yesterday I had a, um, a very kind of more judgmental day, self-judgmental day, um, and it was challenging, right? But I'm, I'm using the human experience to develop that muscle of being more empathic, being more compassionate, being more loving um, and being more nurturing to myself and allowing every part of me to emerge. And some parts of myself are, st are still adolescent, right? Or infantile because I have had such a strong identity in a certain way and it's dissolving, right? And I'm exploring the possibilities in that goop. Right. So love that. Thank you so much, Bill. Always appreciate your encouragement. And uh, Patty, hi, Vanessa. Love your butterfly analogy. I can relate. I love it. Thank you, Patty. Always good to see you, beautiful soul. And uh, Jerry's saying procrastination, a time killer of your now moments. Yeah, definitely. But if we can look at the pattern of procrastination and ask it what it's here to tell us. All right. Like check in. It's a it's a valuable feedback mechanism going on in your life, right? So question everything, you know, look at everything, allow for everything, don't deny anything. All right, that's the way to go and build that internal relationship with yourself. Have a dialogue with yourself because there's an all-knowing part and there's a fear-driven part, all right? And that's what I'm doing. I'm integrating and building the connection between the two. So love that. And uh, John, apologize I'm late. We'll watch the replay. Good, John. And I hope that uh, you definitely get a ton of value from today's message. And let me know any of your thoughts in the comments um, when you watch it back. And uh, Grace, love it. And uh, Elf, much love to you, my friend. Good to see you. So I hope today's message is has served you. And if it has, I'd love for you to share it with anybody in your life that you feel could benefit from it uh, and awaken to their own pathway of transformation. You know, knowing the process allows us to relax into it and give ourselves the necessary time and space to do so and to recognize that it's insanity trying to skip over the necessary parts of that transformation. All right. And I hope it gives you as much clarity and peace and centeredness as it's given me. And um, I'm just really wanting to thank each and every one of you guys for showing up live with me today, for contributing to the conversations. Uh, I love your energy. I love your what you bring and contribute. I love your words of wisdom. I love your courage to share your personal experiences. Um, I just love you guys. All right. So I appreciate you showing up and giving me your most valuable resource, which is your time. And uh, I'd love to hear from any of you guys. Um, if you are going on the journey, if you ever want support, you know, you can always reach out to me. I'm here to help you and support you on your journey to become the leader that you know yourself and you can envision for yourself that you are meant to become. All right. So, so much love for each and every one of you guys, and I will see you very soon. Uh, thanks for showing up.